Live and then I gotta share. All right. All right. I think so. It looks like it took. Let's do a refresh here. All right. We up. There we go. We'll do a couple shares. Those of you just coming on, bear with me a little bit here. Get some shares going. And let's do a share to this one. That's my wall now. Yeah, you got it. It's coming up now. It takes a second for it to pop. awesome how you do that and able to tag people and it's pretty cool yeah in multiple groups it's a lot harder than people understand trying to get it that's my experience you know the computer doesn't like to do all this stuff at once either not that the computer's most robust all right we got it out there in a couple groups for everybody all right that's posting okay uh, go here let's get to my comment section here all right so we see your comments all right we're good to go all right so we're back for another episode of fire starts fire and uh, our mission on this uh, little uh, podcast group live thing is to uh, share some uh, knowledge and some wisdom with the world and uh, whether it be business life or whatever and um, start some fire and uh, those around us so welcome to the show James um, Thank you. James, uh, I was just hanging out with James in Texas. We just flew in uh, last night, and you flew into Florida, and I flew back to New York, and uh, man, are my arms tired. That's a good joke mm -hmm. there, right? <laughs> so uh, we uh, we had a great, uh, great uh, Million Dollar Mastermind in Texas. That was definitely an amazing event. Um, definitely, definitely, like, life-changing experience. Um, from the speakers, um, were amazing. The concert was fun. But uh, the big value of Apex, we say it all the time, is the people we meet, and thus uh, we met. We met, um, you came to the New York event, and we met when I hosted it over in my uh, building over there in Farming. Cars Dallas. and Coffee, I think it was called? Yeah, we did a little Cars and Coffee before we did the uh, main event. And um, yeah, that was a good time. So, welcome to the show. Um, Thank you. So, you're big in um, uh, call center type stuff, where you're doing mm -hmm. follow-ups and, and stuff like that uh, on leads. Um something that um basically we've learned from many businesses that we're only as good as your leads and uh having having information and having leads is key to business without you know whether you're a real estate agent your mortgage broker uh solar um whatever it is if you don't have anyone to call to sell stuff to uh to make appointments with um you know basically you're out of luck so that's where you come in so tell us a little bit about what you do and how it works and um how it could benefit people Absolutely. Yeah. So um, thank you again for having me. Um, I love the concept. And at the end of the day, we're all we're all in the people business. I mean, my 100%. phone. Or, oh, let's go off my screen over there. Um, anyways, we are a lead follow up and lead answer in service for many different industries that we work with um, and also text messaging and we outsource. We use people in other countries, um, both the Philippines and Colombia and some other countries sometimes will do. And we have those people do it for U.S. based businesses. Um, and we're able to prov provide opportunities where people are just missing stuff. I mean, you know, the single real estate agent and loan officer was how I got started. And they would say, hey, I'm too busy to call these leads have you guys call them hmm. and that was how i got my start um and i thought i was going to work with all these insurance agents and they didn't really ask me like my origin story but it really describes like what we do and to like hammer home i was a single insurance agent i started outsourcing i started having people cold call and also follow up on leads and also confirm with people 
if they were home, we actually used to ask people, what kind of car do you have in the driveway? That was a little trick question we used to ask people. And then because I had so many appointments that if I didn't see that car in the driveway, I just kept driving because I had so many bookings that it was a wall of numbers. And, um, and I outsourced. And then eventually people started asking me how to do it. We started teaching people. And then we also do it for uh, corporations now. We just landed our first big corporate gig. And um, it's kind of just taken off really with, and, and, and Apex, shout out to Apex. Apex is a huge part of it. And it's not so much like, oh yeah, I got all these Apex referrals. It's, it's not even that at all. It's the mindset and being around fellow brothers and sisters mm-hmm. with the same mindset. The energy that comes out of that room is just really intense. It's uh, mm-hmm. you come back, uh, so come back when apex high, you know. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, so you started insurance, and you're still doing insurance. Is your full time gig now? There's no more insurance. The uh, about three or four years ago, I don't know when exactly that time frame is. Around three or four years ago, um, the money I was making doing this outweighed what I was making in insurance. I hated doing insurance. Mm. It's part of my story. Um, there's a guy in the group who I actually connected with at Apex. Um, and, you know, I'm not going to put him out there, but he basically came up to me at MDM and expressed like the utmost gratitude. And I don't say that the blow up my spot. I just say that to like, like what an opportunity I have. And he came up to me and I gave him my experience with insurance and he left insurance because he had the same experience and mm-hmm. just like, he didn't want to do it and now he's doing something he loves i'm doing something i love and you know i have three more years of experience of doing something i love which is managing a team of callers for my clients and it's cool to kind of reciprocate where someone else is at like hey man you don't have to keep on doing something that you don't like yeah that's that's a that's a huge one that's uh something i did myself too uh, i'm doing more real estate than i was Sitting behind the computer, um, an HVAC business, and do AutoCAD stuff, and sitting behind the computer and just being by myself and plugging numbers and drawing pictures. Basically, I was like, I don't want to do this. And then I got out to the real mm-hmm. estate world and started dealing with people in the people business, which you know we're all in the people business, and it's nice. It's a it's a whole different world. And I've I've been running with the real estate side of it, and it's been it's been a game changer for me. It's you now, you know, when you don't want to. Do it anymore it's hard to be productive you know and that's a good message for everybody out there that if you're sitting there you don't like what you're doing change it you know it's uh you know i've done it you've done it a bunch of people have done it and you don't have to get stuck in that job that you don't want to be at you know what's the worst that could happen if the next job doesn't work or the new business doesn't work go back to your old job you know it's the worst that yep. could happen so i tell everybody don't don't be stuck get out there and take that think- chance and do what you want to do I think a lot of people have, and, I, and, I, and there's a name for this, and I forget what it's called, but a lot of people feel like they've invested so much time, energy, and money in one direction with something mm. that, that if they stop, that it's like, like, like it's not even like they're going to die or whatever. It's like they're just like, I can never stop. I've spent hundreds of thousands, yeah. and I've, I've ran 500 miles in this direction. Can't turn back now, yeah. Can't turn back now, and it would be for their own benefit and my own, myself included in the statement, I would take this Medicare training that would take me a week, a full week if I focused. Usually it took me about two to four weeks to complete this training and I couldn't even make sales during this time just to do this training and we had to do it every year. It was called the AHIP and then every carrier in order for me to get paid and collect my renewal, I had to pass their test and it was like 10 big tests and it was brutal. And I was like, there's no way I could ever stop. I've taken this test three, for three or four years in a row now. I've built up residuals. I, 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 I stopped on a winning streak. I didn't stop on a losing streak. I, I, I had about $10,000 a month coming in and I had built up uh, as earned, which meant that you know, as long as other people paid their bills, it allowed me to move into something different. And I mean, I basically grinded to just leave that industry which is kind of weird um, because I I didn't make any money in it for a while. And then as soon as I start making money, I'm like, I'm out. And, but I hated it. And I was like, I am done with this. I'm ready to move on. And, um, and I, and I had, I made a decision. I was like, dude, I'm leaving this and I'm going to do something bigger and badder. And, 
you know, it wasn't all wins as soon as I started outsourcing. It was like starting from zero. Yeah, it's a learning process like anything, right? And yep. With the time. And uh, it kind of makes me think of uh, in my let the one more day, right? If you had one more day left on this earth, do you want to be doing it in a job you hate? You know, if you think of everything, take that approach to everything. That was that was real powerful. And I think it's his new book, right? Um, one more day. Power of one more day. If you have one more day left, why are you doing? Why are you stuck? You know, I, I just took the new 365 challenge of 365 dry. I don't know if you saw that. Because it hit me. I was like, one more day. If, if I got one more day left in my life, do I want to spend it at the bar? Do I want to spend it numbing, you know, my, you know, dulling myself out? Um, you know, it's... One, if there's one more day, live it like it's your last. And if you're living it like it's the last and you're in a job you hate, fix it because you don't have much time left here. You know, why be miserable? You know, you can change, you know, it's up to you to change your, your position and make yourself find your own happiness, you know, uh, which yep. is it's pretty cool that I didn't even think we'd be talking about that. But that's a, that's a big topic, I think, right now for a lot of people that are stuck in a job that they hate and, uh, you know, you launch and go try sure. something new. The worst that could happen is you go back to your old job, you know, but the best that could happen is you, you'll find something you like and be happy and make a bunch of money or at least help people and, you know, being out doing what you want to do is you made the same money or even sometimes a little less money, but at least you like what you're doing. It makes your life a lot better. There, the ego is such an interesting thing. And I don't pretend to be an expert at understanding this stuff. There's far better men and women that know this better than I do, but the ego will, it, it isn't just like, oh, I made all this money. I'm a rich hotshot type ego. The ego will also say, you can't go back. You've done this uh, so long that if you do this, you know, what's mom and dad going to think? What's yeah. what's your high school buddies that went to college and you graduated college in the same career field going to think? And the ego will actually take it like as a negative of importance for you. Like this is some achievement. Yeah. Like you've got a piece of paper and I, I don't have a degree. And so I'm not I'm not the guy that like shit some people that have a degree, but I could see someone being like, I got an MBA and spent four years of my life studying to do something to make someone else happy. Hmm. And, you know, we hear people like Gary Vee talk about this kind of stuff all the time. Hmm. And, it, and it's, it's so true. And just to kind of piggyback off what you said about Ed Milet, um, I sat through five minutes of his talk. He said one thing and I, and I don't know why I did this. I wish I would have stayed, but at the same time, I'm glad that I left. He said one thing that hit me so hard with, you know, this this could be the one shot you have with this relationship in this business or this family member. And I forget exactly how he said it. And I said, and, and I got up and I made some phone calls to some people that I needed to say some things. Mm. And I took action on some stuff. And I don't regret it. Of course, I would have loved to have been there and hear yeah. this whole speech. But I knew that in that moment, I needed to take action immediately on it. And I took action immediately. I, it was like, it was like, I was like, wasn't even in control of my life. I literally heard it on the screen and it was like, you know, what have you, it was like, a, yeah. like an eight mile, if you had one more shot kind of thing. And it was yeah, like, yeah. And I literally like a robot got up, went to my hotel room and made a phone call that I had to make. And, and, and I was like, man, I needed that. And, you know, you talk about like one day left on earth. Um, I am, I'm going to spend uh, about two to three weeks with my family. I've been spending two to three weeks with them in the summertime for about three years in a row. And COVID I turned into a positive for me because it's allowed me to spend more time than I've ever spent with my family in over a decade. Hmm. And it's like, if I knew I had one more like day, I would um, want to spend the morning with my mom. I would want to work hard all day, whether it's 10, 12 hour day, whatever it is doing what I do. And I would want to spend the, the evening with my father. And then I, I mean, I truly believe that I would have a smile on my face. If they're like, Hey, your time's gone. I'd be like, cool. You know, I lived yeah. it up. Yeah. No regrets. You know, I think uh, a lot of us have regrets of things through the years and taking action like that. I think it's super important when that, when you get that call, you get that notion, um, you got to act on it. Cause you know, taking action is, is huge. We all, we all think thoughts and we let them pass. And I swear it all the time. We said, when, when you get that thought in your gut, that sometimes God telling you it's time to go do something. And when you let that pass, it's like you're sleeping on the opportunity. You know, it's, you know, we owe it, we owe it to ourselves and to the world to let our, our power, our wisdom shine and, you know, our light shine. And, uh, when we don't, when we sit on our, our gut, when our gut tells us to do something and we don't do it, it's kind of, you always feel a regret about it. You know, I should have, called that person, I should have went to this place, I should have made that investment, I should have, 
and you, you always have to credit on that when you had a strong feeling in your gut about it and you didn't follow it so that's that's pretty cool that you follow that i mean ed was powerful the whole the whole meeting was powerful it was a couple of the people there literally i felt like they were speaking to me um it was uh definitely absolutely really powerful um honestly actually i was sitting there and hearing the common theme of uh, oh. <laughs> Some little tiny people sneaking in. Um, common theme: uh, love, basically not wasting any time, and also the uh, the drink and the drugs. You know, all that stuff that that doesn't serve any purpose in our lives. You know, and it's uh, that's kind of why I decided to do this journey. Again, I wouldn't consider myself an alcoholic, but I would pretty much drink almost every day. You know, like you know, after work, you know, two three drinks, whatever. You know, glass of wine here, beer or two there. And, where you know it, it's, you know, five, six, seven days a week, and you're like, you know, and every morning, you know, you make up, and you're a little dull, and you're not on your game, and you're a little tired, and you maybe stayed out a little too late, and you didn't get enough sleep, and, and like, you know, I was watching what was going on at that event, with everyone going out and partying, and getting drunk, and coming in late to the event, and, you know, rooftop parties, and people going nuts, and I'm like, you're paying hundreds of thousands of dollars to be at this event, and you're going to go get drunk, and, and miss out on the event, like, it didn't work for me. So as, as the, all the speakers talked to me, I was kind of like, all right, I got to do this. And uh, come on, baby. <laughs> um, wait, baby. <laughs> um, like you said, I got the calling to, it's time to do, do something with this. So that's pretty cool. But um, enough about us. Um, you're uh, living in Colombia most of the time now, right? So tell us about that, how that works and what it's like to live in Colombia. Yeah, so um, full transparency, I'm in a hotel room in Florida right now, and um, I just came back from Columbia last Friday for the Apex event. And um, so I ended up in Columbia three years ago. I'm terrible with time frame because this whole COVID thing oh, yeah, seems like, like, a, like a year yeah. long, but yeah. really it was like two and a half years. It's so yeah, yeah. like I get all boggled and how long it's been going on. Um, but I was down there before COVID. And so I had placed an ad for an appointment setter on Craigslist, which, you know, who even uses Craigslist anymore? Well, I did yeah, three yeah. years ago and I had never even heard of Cali, Columbia. All I knew about it was bad stuff that you hear everyone talk about. But I was like, I forget who I heard or how I even thought to advertise in Columbia. I have no clue, to be honest with you. But I, I, I put an ad out on Craigslist and anyone that's ever used Craigslist, it's super confusing. Like you get an email and then you got to like decipher the email and, and, and spam, you get yeah. spam stuff, yeah. Yeah. you get spam stuff, you get bots and you're like, yeah. what's real, what's not. Yeah, yeah. And um, so I call this woman and I hire her um, like after like, I think one or two interviews, I forget. And um, she worked for me for about three months and I was talking to her one time and she invited me to come down. And in those three months, I went through a, a freaking, you know, Johnny, let's put it this way. Johnny Depp was the first person I could relate to. That's how toxic the relationship wow. was. Mine wasn't like as publicized, obviously, but mine was like, holy shit. Like I was like, damn, I didn't know that people were like that. And so anyways, I get out of that kind of relationship. I don't want to harp too much on that. So I get out of that kind of relationship and I was like, I got to go to Columbia. If I never go, I'm going to regret never going and so she had invited me down to stay with her family she had kids and she was like hey you can sleep in my kids room i'll put my kids in my room with me and my husband we want to invite you down and they just were really welcoming and i was like whoa that's really cool and so i still got an airbnb but the first night i i had no clue i was getting in late and i was kind of worried i'm like is this going to be like sketchy like am i mean going to get like kidnapped by a taxi yeah it's like, definitely it's, wild it's uh... <laughs> no, no no idea i mean i mean and 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 so and this is before like anyone i knew was even living in columbia i mean i'm sure there was plenty of other people that i didn't know that oh, are it's down like there. yeah now it seems like a place anyone in my here. social circle that i knew was living in columbia and um so i went down there um for i think two or three days it was like a weekend it was like a friday to sunday fly out on sunday and then two weeks later, I went back down for a whole week. And then I think a month after that, I went down for a whole month. And um, I had, you know, hired that woman. Uh, and I had other employees working for me. 
and um, we basically started remote call center stuff. And so that woman worked for me. It, it, long story short, it did not work out with that woman. Not all my hires have been successful. I mean, I don't try to sit here and say that every employee I've ever hired has yeah. worked out. Nature of um, beast, yeah. But she, she, and I'm grateful for her because she like kind of got the process going. Like if all in all, if I look at that relationship, um, it was, you know, a lot of like, like I could look at bad stuff, but there was a lot of good stuff because not so much client or like work stuff. She introduced me to a beautiful country and she showed me a bunch of things I would have never seen and made me feel safe and secure. Cause I was like, I remember the first time I got there and I never left the compound I was in. So I literally never left the gated area. I do, I would do like laps and I wouldn't even leave. And um, we started hiring more people. We threw a party for the children uh, as a way to give back. I, I got a mini horse for over a hundred kids <laughs> of 2020 Halloween. That was freaking insane. If there's a, a bunch of slideshows on YouTube on my YouTube channel with it. That's and cool. little girls were crying, kids were going nuts. And, um, you know, they, they bust the kids in and I, and all I did was I funded it. You know what I mean? I came up with the idea for the mini horse. I just started saying shit and I didn't even know I could even make it happen. And I was like, we're going to get a mini horse for the kids. And I'd be doing like these Facebook lives. And then people would be messaging me. Like one person made a meme of me with my King crown and my sword. And it was me riding a mini horse and they were tagging me and stuff. And I was just like feeding into it. I'm like, we're going to have a, it's going to be awesome. the best horse. <laughs> and then I get there and I'm like, dude, you don't even know where to find a mini horse. How are you going to get a mini horse? <laughs> and sure as shit, you know, an hour south, they gave me this mi the mini horse. The day of, there was like a an old switcheroonie and, they, and the mini horse I was supposed to get, I didn't get. And I got even a, a smaller mini horse. <laughs> and this thing was like this. And it was, it was crazy. I was like, what the hell? And it, was, it, was, it was awesome though for the kids. Really cool. <laughs> That's so cool. Now, what's it? Uh, what's the country like? That I mean, it's, it's um, obviously a little, little depressed. I imagine, right? It's uh, um, so there's a huge income inequality, and um, I don't want to get too far ahead with some stuff, but I will kind of give you an overview. And um, and obviously, you know, feel free to ask me anything of what I want to do. Um, I have huge plans for the country. I'm already doing it. Um, so the country has huge income inequality. The rich are extremely rich and the poor are extremely poor. There is no middle class per se. Um, it's very apparent. Um, there's a huge lack of opportunity, uh, especially for young people, especially for young women. Um, we provide, uh, at this point, we're on pace. My goal, I have my poster board here that I did as part of my one of the exercises like manifestation. My goal was by the 18th of June to do five people a month that we're hiring. I'm at like two to three right now, which is a lot. And, you know, cause we've been doing it now for multiple months and we're building it up. Um, the country does not have any much opportunity. Um, and one of my goals is to provide opportunity and also serve my client, you know, so it's, you know, and, and then of course, you know, I make money off of the middle or however you want to look at it, but uh, I'm, I'm, I'm in the people business. I'm helping find people. And I'm helping clients find, you know, in their business, the right person. I mean, that's, that's awesome that, um, we're able to affect people and positive change and whatnot. Um, so the country itself, you're in a, you're, when you go down here in a city area, I mean, it's, it's, mm -hmm. it's, you know, developed, it's, you know, cause there's parts of the country it's not developed pretty much. I mean, like running water yeah. and, uh, and electric everywhere, or is it, uh, no, it, there's parts that. Um, let me put it this way. I live in a real, I, I have a really good life and I don't take it for granted, especially when I'm down there. I live in a really nice area. Um, and I remind myself that, um, when I can, and obviously sometimes it's not like convenient that I can do this every single second of my life while I'm down there, I feed people to remind myself that I have it pretty good. And, and so, you know, I'll, I'll, I, I, I feed people. I literally like will feed people on the street. And um, it's part of that goes along with my mission while I'm down there. And, you know, I'm putting energy out there that if I'm going to be there, part of what 
incorporates me being here is I have to, you know, bring back, you know, I'm, I'm making money here, which is great. Allows me to live this lifestyle, blah, 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 but I have to bring back. And so I feed people. And, um, the sad part is some neighborhoods that are extremely unsafe that I will not go in. You're not going to catch me on the street, just feeding people in these neighborhoods, to be honest with you. It's, it's dirt roads. It looks like, you know, something out of like what we would see with like Afghanistan or like Iraq and like it, it, it you yeah. I found that out and, the, and we'll give you the best picture of, of it. My, I had a driver, my first year I was there, I had a driver that worked for me. He drove me whenever I needed rides. Well, that's cool. And like a security um, guard kind of thing, you know? Yeah. And, and one, and one day he was like, the traffic is horrendous. And he was like, Hey, do you want to go the fast route or you want to sit in traffic? Well, he didn't tell me the fast route was going through the worst neighborhood <laughs> possible with potholes that would take out a whole tire. It was crazy. And we went through this thing. And it was like, it, there wasn't electricity, whole neighborhoods were on a street. I'm talking 20 to 50 people, all mixtures of people, men, women, you name it, all kinds of different people out there. And, it, and, and, and they were like grown, grown people. And it wasn't, it, it just was like, hey, this is not safe where we're at. And, yeah. and there was no cars and it was like, he was driving super slow so that way he would go through the potholes. And I was like, hey man, I'll sit in traffic. Don't ever do that again. Like, I don't want to ever be caught in one of those neighborhoods again. Yeah, like, that was that. really sketchy. But it, we went, it took about 15 to 30 minutes to get through instead of two hours of traffic. And I was like, I mean, still, it's not worth it. Yeah, yeah. I blow a tire and stuck there stranded. That wouldn't be fun. Yeah. No, I was wondering, like, you know, when you travel to foreign countries, I went to Argentina a bunch of years ago. Buenos Aires is probably 15 years or better. And I remember when I was going there, I was like, oh, it's not safe this night. It was plenty safe. It was it was fine. I mean, and they said, oh, worry about like, you know, corrupt, you know, police and stuff like that. And even there, I mean, I didn't, everything was fine. You I, know? I, and to give Columbia credit and not that I, I'm holding a scorecard for things that have happened. There's been things that happened. I've never had an issue with the police. I think where a lot of people run into issue with police, and I'm not trying to single out any particular person when I say this are people that are looking for drugs looking for hookers or in like sketchy nightclubs yeah and yeah. those sense. three yeah. things when americans i mean i speak loosely canadians whoever americans australians whoever come down and they're like yo let's go look for this stuff they're the ones that all of a sudden end up in a sketchy predicament all of a sudden the police are shaking them down and this yeah. and that and and it's like man like you know it you're in a beautiful country. You don't even need to do that. And, but yeah, I've never encountered any problem with the police. If anything, they protect me in certain situations. And, um, I mean, don't get me wrong. I'm not saying that they're not corrupt at all, but, but they yeah, don't mess. Stay out of trouble and it'll bother you type thing. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's, that's, that's interesting. I said, that I hear a lot about Colombia, and I've had thoughts in my mind to go and I always said, you know, like, I'm a little out of place there. Just, you know, they speak you want, English there. I mean, generally, most people speak if English. If you went, so where I live, it's, you're probably not going to have as much fun if, as if you went to Medellin. I always tell people, you know, sure, if you want to come visit me, great, but go to Medellin. You're going to have a blast. There's a bunch of cool places, bunch of cool stuff to do. I, it's not my speed. Um, a lot of people go down there, and it, it, it's, it still doesn't. And, and I'm sober. Um, I did go to that, that rooftop party. I smoked a cigar there. I didn't take a single drink. I don't drink. I'm, I mean, I literally, I'm going to have 14 years. Oh, God bless, brother. That's crazy uh, that you're saying that being, I just took my challenge and I didn't even know that about you. So, mm -hmm. yeah, that's why I was like, man, he's talking about that. Yeah. And, and yeah, it's interesting, man. Like for me, I'm able to go to places that I used to be scared of and provided that I have a, I have a, I have a, I have a good reason. So to kind of piggyback, but kind of go back a little bit, that rooftop party, it, it, at first it was kind of cool mingling social. Then it turned into like slosh fest and I'm like, peace. Yeah. Like, we, we bailed on that too. We were up there the first night we were there. Or that's was, right. Yeah, yeah. You were there. That's right. And yeah. second, second night, I was like, I'm not going to that. I didn't go and back I, the second night. No. Yes. And I, and, and, and I was like, why, why am I? And, and so that's the kind of, but, but, that's the kind of stuff that some people do when they go to Medellin and they're like, I'm an entrepreneur and, and, and they live it up and have fun. But cool. for me, that ship has sailed. I got sober when I was 20 years old. I was homeless before. I don't share all this stuff. Wow. My, wow. My, my thing, you hear all these people talk about their little dialogue story of what happened. 
Like I got kicked out of my 20th birthday. I had nowhere to live. I had nowhere to go. Every wow. friend kicked me out of their house. I don't have some like streets and eating at a garbage story, but I didn't have anywhere to live. I had no address. And, um, I, and, and so I, I, I had insurance and I went back to rehab and I got sober and I have this, this life that's second to none. And I, and that, and then, so when I go to foreign countries, um, Mexico, uh, Colombia, um, I think to myself, why would I spend it in a bar? Yeah. You know what I mean? Like of all places and especially a bar with a bunch of Americans. <laughs> and that's what people do though. I got invited to this, this, uh, rooftop night lounge bar in Medellin that all the gringos go to and 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 now people that knew me they invited me they're like yo come through blah 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 and I'm like hey let's let's meet up for cigars or let's get like some yeah, like authentic food. Yeah. and um that's the kind of stuff I'm interested in cultural stuff um but yeah alcohol stuff for me um it just doesn't make any sense anymore that's what kind of what I came up to um it's uh, just there's no purpose. You know, I, my message this morning was about purpose. What purpose? What is your purpose in life, and what purpose does everything have in your life? And if it's not serving a purpose, why is it there? Whether it be alcohol, whether it be a person that's you know just you know taken, 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 um, just to really you know. And I think a lot of stuff we talk about is just being conscious of our life, right? Just being intentional with everything in our life, like not letting stuff just happen. Um, and uh, I kind of said, you know what? It's time. Like I was watching, I was watching everyone get drunk, and then. MDM and first night actually I got there. I got there around lunchtime. Went out for lunch. Had three, had two beers. Uh, then went boot barn. You know, I had to get my cowboy gear. And then after that, I went. We got two margaritas. And then after that, I went for cigars with Chris Whitehead. And I had two martinis. So I had like six drinks in the course of the afternoon. And I was kind of dragging that night. I was kind of dragging the next morning. And I'm like, why am I doing this? Like, what's the purpose of this? Like, what's the point? And I'm then watching everyone on stage talk about it, talk about it, talk about it. I'm like, good for you for even yeah. talking about it right now and, and, yeah. and realizing that it's something that, you know, that you need to look at. I mean, there's stuff in my life that I'm like, hey, you know what? And especially. You're not living to your fullest potential. You're allowing certain behaviors to keep you from actually doing it. And it comes down to discipline. It you is. Know, it, it is. It's, it's hard. It's, discipline. it's saying, hey, you know, and, and and there's people, and, I'm, and it doesn't matter who they are, but there's people I spoke to that were like, yeah, I was in bed by 1030 the night of that event, of a Friday night kind of thing. And I'm like, you know, I would have loved to go to the cigar thing. And that, and I think that's productive. And like I said, for, like I don't drink, but there's things in my life where it's like, hey, you know, that, that obsessive YouTube watching for hours on end, and you know you got to wake up early tomorrow and you're not consuming good content maybe it's something like inappropriate maybe it's stuff that just is yeah. you know not like hateful but maybe it's just stuff that just doesn't serve any garbage in garbage out i say all the time i don't watch the news yeah. anymore for that same reason i used to watch the news a lot i'd always had the news on in the background you know cable news whatever and i'm like ah. you know actually i heard a joel Osteen uh sermon on it and he said i've never seen someone that's watched the news and felt better about themselves in the world I say, you know, it's spot on. I'm like, shut it off. Garbage in, garbage out, you know. So whether you're filling your mind with, you know, trash TV, news, whatever, you're filling your alcohol, drugs, you know, porn, whatever else, whatever your addiction is, what is the what is the purpose? What is the purpose? What is How is it serving you? You know, especially in our group, we're paying, again, thousands, tens of thousands to belong to this organization like Apex and other organizations out there. And you're going to go and spend all this money and go there and, get drunk and, and, and miss the events and come in late and be hung over. And, and I'm not saying I haven't done it for some of these events because, you know, listen, everyone gets carried away and, you know, there's been some Apex events in the past where, you know, everyone's out till, you know, 12, 1, 2 in the morning. And I'm like, and I'm like, why am I doing this? Like, you know, it's like, this isn't serving my purpose. And I've realized that. And uh, I said, you know what, it's time. And then, you know, I, I try to be a leader. Um, you know, when I do my 365 ride, People thought I was crazy, and I said, you know what, I'm going to do it. And they're like, there's no way you're going to go through this. I did it, you know. So, you know what, I feel like, you know, I had a calling to do it, and being at that event, and here we are. So I made, uh, so every morning I check in with uh, Sammy Knight and uh, Sammy Smith, who's been dry for four or five years now, and um, and Chris Whitehead. So I have a morning message with them. Another day done, and it's just because I know that I can't, 
I, they, those guys mean a lot to me, and I know that I can't lie to them. I can't. I know I can't go have a drink because then I'll have to tell them I had a drink. And you know, accountability partners are everything. You know, so that's what I'm doing. So every morning I get to say good morning and uh, let the day dry. So uh, that's how I'm making it work. And I think it's important for other people too. If you, you know, if anyone wants to join this journey, um, obviously you you know a lot about it. Sammy Smith knows a lot about it. Gabriel Hermans uh, knows a lot about it. Benny Montalbano, all friends of mine that all have gone dry and, and their lives are better for it. So, you know, you know, it's just something to think about. You know, everyone struggles with it. Everyone's thinking about it in the back of the head going, hey, you know, I really should stop, and they don't. So think about it. But anyway, let's get back into your business. So you're in Colombia. You got uh, crew people working for you. It's pretty cool. And uh, so how's it work? What do you do? Like, how's the process start? Yeah, yeah. Um, just to keep it as simple as possible, anyone... If you're a marketer or if you're in some kind of niche, uh, home services, uh, for instance, generate a lead, generate a referral. Sometimes you don't have time to call them back. You know, lead comes in at dinner time. What are you going to do? And so we created this process of where we get the lead sent to us in real time. We call it. We follow your script. We have your calendar in front of us. So it's like if you're you know, got your kids tomorrow after four and you can't take an appointment, we already know because it's blocked off on your calendar because we've done that on the setup. And so we have your exact schedule and the time that you're available. And then when we talk to the person, the homeowner, the real estate buyer, whatever the industry is, we're calling that person. We're using your lingo. We're using the rebuttals that our client gives us. It allows us to be experts in industries, not experts, allows us to understand industries very easily because the client's like telling us exactly what to say. Here's the rebuttal for it when they say this, and then we book them into appointments. And so um, we've done, I, I, I can't, obviously I can't say everything. The industries that we haven't worked with, and I met a guy at Apex that runs convenience stores and I was kind of cracking up and I was like, you know, storefront locations is probably the, the one thing that we don't do and e-commerce because it just doesn't make any sense. Yeah, I don't see that would make sense, yeah. Exactly. Um, we've managed gyms, UFC fight clubs. We've done COVID tests in New York City in, in the heart of the pandemic. Uh, sense, yeah. st stem cell injections, cryotherapy, that stuff where they freeze you. Service-related um, service stuff, I think, makes sense, you know. Service-based yeah. industries, real estate, mortgage, yeah. solar, roofing, all the home services I can think of. Um, and then our clients provide us a script. Now, I don't want to sit here and say that I have a client in every single industry, um, but we're very heavy in the roofing space right now and uh, mortgage and real estate. And then we just started shifting. I mean, about a third of my business now is now with corporate partners that one, I mean, we just, I mean, I've never done this before and, and kind of sped along where I'm at now with my Colombian people, tech support, tech support we're handling for Coca-Cola oh, for one of their part, for one of their parts of their business. Coca-Cola is a huge organization, but they have one part of their business that they need this tech support handled, and we got the contract. That's very cool. That's very cool. That's a, that's a big name to be working for. So uh, yeah, it's a, yeah, it's a client, and that's yeah. the main that's the main partner that we service for them is is Coca-Cola. That's pretty cool. I like it. I like it. So the thing I like about that too is, and I've kind of seen this with others. You get to so for me as a real estate agent, you get to touch a lot of different real estate agents, and you get to learn other markets across the country, programs that are working, campaigns that are working. And, you know, when you're in the real estate world, you know, I got a team, but there's still only a dozen of us, you know, and we're kind of, you know, there's kind of a little, a little private in the local area as far as I don't want to give you my secrets of what's working. But, you know, if you're in Florida, I'm happy to share my secrets because I want to know your secrets because we're not competitors, you know, and then you also become referral partners, you know, half in, yep. half in New York's moving to Florida. So when I get a Florida agent, I got someone to send them to, you know, and uh, that works well. But I love the the idea that you touch across all these different people and you come up with the best ideas from each person and, and then execute it, which is really a cool, cool value add that uh, you almost isn't, you know, isn't really part of your, your sale, but it is, you know, which is, uh, you know, that's the way I look at this stuff. I'm like, wow, like you're, you're working with, you know, a whole bunch of different realtors in different areas of the country and, you know, what, what kind of stuff is working that's, that's, you know, getting people to work with them. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, like I said, you're only, you can be the best realtor in the world, but if you have no one to you know, sell to and no one to list houses from, you know, it doesn't serve you any purpose. It goes back to the data generation, lead generation. And, yep. um, you know, a lot of realtors are hesitant to uh, spend money on lead generation and, and, you know, 
without it, you're dead in the water. You're sitting there looking out the window. So, um, you know, it's a really good service. It's really, uh, you know, from what you've explained to me, it's really not that expensive either. So it's really a, a you know, you sell one house and you paid for it for, you know, a couple months worth of service. So. Yep. And, and kind of to just kind of put a little nugget in there. One of the things I discovered and, and the realtor, we always explain as a long term process. Real estate transaction could take anything yeah. from three to six months, could be as fast as a month with the cash buyer, but being realistic, it's going to be about a three to six month yep. on average. And same thing with the mortgage because they go hand in hand. Um, and the roofers was, was really interesting. And it's a high ticket sale and fast, especially if it's insurance money hmm. or the person has, they're very liquid and they're ready to move. You know, a roofer, we had a guy, he made 30 grand in two weeks. Wow. Sorry, in one week, he made off two sales. And it was like, he just started the campaign with the marketer. He just started with us. Boom, 30 grand. Obviously, you know, he's got margins and materials and stuff like that, et cetera. But it's like, that's pretty fast. Within one week of hiring a marketing agency, mm. you've made two sales valued at 30 grand. And it's like, those the, that, that really interested me because these people can recoup their investment pretty quickly. And um, I've been working with real estate agents and mar uh, mortgage people long enough that I'm pretty good at spotting out people that are like, hey, this didn't work after month one. And it's like, hey, like, how long does it usually take you to close a sale? And they're like, three to six months. And I'm like, then how am I going to be like a, a miracle healer? Mm, yeah, 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 definitely. Yeah, it's a long game. Uh, kind of makes me want to go into roofing here and uh, everyone in Apex seems like a, they're a roofer. I'm like, I must be missing something. They're like, <laughs> everyone's a roofer. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it, it, the grass always seems greener yeah. on the other side. Like, I mean, I, I actually do have a three to five year business plan where I actually want a co op where I handle everything on the roof and hand side and someone else does all the construction. Mm -hmm. But that would be the only way I would do it. If like, I'm not getting my hands dirty, but I do the sales, sales side of it. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. But yeah, I mean, Grass always seems to be on the other side versus like what you're doing right now may not be always the sexiest, but it makes you money. Yeah, yeah. We were talking about that earlier about, uh, mm -hmm. you know, shiny object syndrome. You know, everyone's looking for the next big deal and they don't concentrate on what they know and where they're making money. They're making money here and then they try and start making money there and they give up on here and then they, they never finish anything. You know, they're... I just... It's, sorry, I want, to, I want to say something about yeah. that. I just had a mortgage broker and he commented on my post about this and, and then not to throw this guy's business out there, but he, he commented on my Facebook post and he is in the mortgage industry and uh, Facebook created what's called professional mode and it allows you to earn money. I, I changed my profile into professional mode just to test it to see if I get better organic engagement. Build your machine stuff. I want to test it out, yeah, see yeah, if it's yeah. better this way for building my machine. I'm not here to start all of a sudden make money off Facebook. That's a total another direction of why am I going that way? This guy said that he did it and he was chasing after getting paid from Facebook and it took away energy from him doing mortgage stuff. And I was like, case in point, yeah, you know yeah. what I mean? You stop doing what's working to chase this other thing because Facebook's going to pay you 35000 to create what's equivalent to like TikTok reels. And it's like, dude, that's way out of my focus. Like, why would I do that? That yeah, makes no sense. No. And and that at least that guy could admit it. And he was like, "Dude, I screwed up. I shouldn't have done that. It took me off my focus." Yeah. And it's like, you know, as as business people or entrepreneurs, like focus is huge. You, can, yeah, you know, stay in your lane, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, A Rod talked about it with his conversation that he had with Warren Buffett, his mentor. You know, you you can't go down every sideline. You have to stay. Yeah. you know down the middle of the field when you're going and 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 that's the truth of it and you know you join apex and that's what i, I love apex but i also like you know it's, it's not a bad thing it's more of just like i have to like pause for a second because you'll see a whole bunch of people doing a whole bunch of stuff and you're like yeah. dude what if i did that i, I i'm gonna crush it you yeah, know yeah, yeah. i'm gonna i'm gonna mine this stuff I'm going to buy these little dragons that are going to make me all kinds of money and they're going to have baby dragons and, yeah, gonna, yeah, yeah. you know, <laughs> you know, we're going to buy spaceships and, and, and it's like, all of a sudden it's like, yeah, it's like, whoa, like, yeah. like, come back down to earth. Those people, what you don't know is they're spending three to 5% of their money because they've 
built a business. I forget who said this and I'm getting a little tangent now, but I heard this one guy that one of my clients, and I forget who he told me that he heard it from, but he's like, build one thing first, then move on to the next mm. thing. And so many people, they have barely even started to build the one thing. Yeah. And it's like, they're like laying the foundation and they're like smoothing over the base. And then they're like, holy shit, let me run across the foundation real quick. And they just like run over to the next thing. And yeah. it's like, no, you yeah. see it a lot. There's a lot of people out there that are brilliant. Uh, but there's they're in a hundred different places. They got a hundred different jobs, and they're you know good at a couple things. But you know they could do everything, but they're only good at a couple things. And if they would just focus on what makes them money, what what makes sense, you know, yeah, could you know, could I go build a you know a battleship? I'm sure I go build a battleship. Does that make sense for me to go build a battleship? No, you know, I'm gonna sell real estate. You know, so um, it's a I think that shiny object syndrome. I think a lot of us in the in the entrepreneurial world tend to be ADHD, ADD, and, you know, it's kind of why, you know, it makes you think a little bit more than the average person. It makes you, your brain don't stop working, so you wind up constantly driving. Um, it's definitely a common theme in, in the apex world. And, uh, but that gives you that shiny object syndrome where your mind's constantly on to the next big thing. And uh, you got to, that's it, you got to concentrate on one thing. I know you see a lot of, in the real estate world, you see a lot of, like, doctors, attorneys, they have their practice, they make a bunch of money, and then they buy their buildings and their investment properties and they'll have a big real estate portfolio. But that portfolio started off of their main job, started off of their, you know, doctor, or their attorney, whatever their business is, you know, even contractors and stuff. They, they use their main business, to generate the income from that. They take that income and then they start investing that into, you know, the real estate. And then they become a big real estate person, but it started out as, you know, whatever their main job was. You know, the, like, um uh I, I love these kind of conversations by the way um one of what i think is one of the the greats in baseball we heard a rod but another great that actually used to live in my old neighborhood and um was Derek cheater i know you're in your <clears throat> yeah, yeah. that's my voice there Derek cheater went and bought a baseball team the miami marlins because he knows baseball yep and he, he's worth tons of money, right? Kurt Schillen was worth a ton of money. I'm a Phillies fan. Kurt Schillen, I love watching him play. He spent hundreds of million dollars to buy a video game company that went bankrupt to build a video game company. And I think to myself, Kurt Schillen's a pitcher. Yeah. Not that he doesn't know video games, but more than likely he knows a ton more about baseball. Yeah. I'm talking like 500 million, might have even been more money that he spent on this video game company. It was a lot. We're talking hundreds and hundreds of millions. And it failed. Bankrupt doesn't exist anymore. And here's Derek Jeter, who obviously is a more well-known player in, in every I mean, he's earned it. And he's he's buying a baseball team. Yeah, could Kurt Schoen have bought a triple A team? 100 percent He could have probably bought three of them. Yeah, yeah. And 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 I think like not that they have to only stick to baseball, but I think like some people they get into stuff that it it, it it doesn't make any sense and you know i know you want to talk about business and i talk about business all the time mm -hmm. and i'm i'm in one lane and that's phone calls so people ask me like what i do i make calls i tell people call center because it's like the easiest like simplest way and and i i always think call center has like a negative meaning so i don't like saying it but you know we make phone calls for us based businesses and help their clients and um and we get people all the time that ask us to do stuff um eric thomas talked about it standards we get people to do ask us to do stuff that i, I don't want to say that it's um not appropriate stuff but it, it's just stuff that's out of alignment it's mm -hmm. out of alignment with what we do not that it's bad stuff it just is not what we do and um and I'll tell you what, man, like I landed the biggest deal of my life and I got paid already on it and signed contract last week. And then I got paid on um, Friday and in between, I think the, I signed, they signed the contract on Wednesday. They paid on Friday. I was, we were trying to get them to, um, it was a good bit of money. We were so much so that I was trying to get a wire transfer versus Stripe mm -hmm. because I mean, I, I think I had like over $300 worth of fees taken out of it. And you know, eventually the wire is set up for next month for great. But I mean, I was just trying to save a buck or two. And if I can make 300 extra bucks and oh, not yeah. have to pay a strike, cool. Anyways, long story short, during between Wednesday and Friday, I had people that had 
pitched me on working with them. And that's what it's like now. I get people that all the time message me that are like, hey, can you help me with this, 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 this? Some people, the answer is yes. And it's such a blessing to even be able to do this now because at the beginning, I was trying to take on anyone and everyone. We're outsourcing graphic design. I'm like, 20 bucks, I'll do it. And it's like, dude, yeah. I didn't make any money. Yeah. And, um, and I said no to a huge opportunity, huge opportunity. Not going to name the company because they're very big in the roofing space. Uh, not, not Apex people at all. And I said no. And what they wanted us to do, I was like, it's out of alignment. Um, we make phone calls. If you want us to make phone calls, I was trying to pivot and tell them, hey, we can help you here. And they're like, you know, they played their cards and they basically, you know, their response when I said no, it it, it reassured me that I made the right call. They didn't like hearing it. And mm. they you know, had, had a few choice words. And Core um, values, right? They talk about it all the time. Ideal client, right? Yeah, it's funny, man. You find out who your real friends are when you say no, and you find out how bad a client could have been when you tell them no. And mm. sometimes they start like, why would you say no to me? No one's, I've heard this. I've literally heard this. No one's ever told me no before. And it's like, oh, dude, I'm telling you no right now because I I, I can't help you. If I Not take your fit. money, yeah. Yeah. the likelihood that I'm going to have to possibly refund you because I don't want to hear from you or talk to you or like we can't help you. It's like, it's just going to waste my time. Right. And um, long story short, I said no to a really big deal. And um, that Friday, I signed my biggest contract ever. Hmm. And it's like, I think that if I had said yes, it was a test from the universe. Yeah. Yep. 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 Yeah, that's 100%. Yeah, that's, that's, that's a big one that, that you got to learn that when it, don't force it. Um, when I used to flip houses, the houses that I forced when I said, I think I can make money on this house, that's a force to me. So there's certain houses I'm like, this is a home run. I'm going to make a ton of money in this house. I could sell the house tomorrow without even touching it and make money on this house. And then other ones that I was like, I think I can make money on this and I made money but it wasn't really worth the effort you know because yeah. I forced it you know when you force those deals and if, probably if I would have said no to that the next deal would have been better but you know I was forcing the deal so that's just something to know when when to say when on uh on your deals but um on my computer I might talk to you but I'm, yeah. I'm still here losing it yeah we actually I'm coming up on our uh, hour mark here so we can start winding this down but yeah, how do I sound sitting. not better I'm trying to plug my computer in there you go he did yeah yeah, it must be that spot. I'm here. Working remote. <laughs> yep. It's pretty awesome when you think about it, right? You know, we're uh, we're here having a conversation. Like I would say, like we're sitting at the bar together, not drinking, and uh, talking about whatever comes up. And you're in Florida, and I'm in New York, and uh, it's kind of fun. <laughs> I'll, I'll tell you, and 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 I don't know if hopefully I didn't like change the course of how you asked your questions, but I mean, I, I love talking business. I went to a conference um, with like the top executives of AT&T, uh, Zoom was there. They gave me this cool water bottle. This is like a $90 water bottle. It's got, uh, it's got GPS in it. So, I mean, whatever it's like, I, I know it, it's like a low jack. If I lost this thing, it would send a transmission and I could find it. That's cool. It, 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 it tracks my water intake. Anyways, Zoom was there and they were giving out all kinds of shit. And um, there was like this underlying theme and um, we used one of their other companies and the other company, you probably know this cause you know, you, you've been around for a minute. And it's like, I have prior to zoom, it was pretty shitty when we tried to like join a thing. It was like these other like wonky softwares. Yeah, yeah. And there was a lot of shade that people were throwing in some of the conversations about zoom. Zoom, zoom was not this big company that all of a sudden blew up they were a big company but they weren't the giant there were yeah. a bunch of other giants COVID did them a favor <laughs> they were zoom was super corporate and they left another company that was super corporate and they focused on the individual which is super smart when you think about it and, and there were there were a lot of like dudes in suits and they all were shit talking zoom and i'm thinking to myself you guys are still hating on what they did and zoom's making tons and tons and tons of money like like they and and they they saw a need for a change change and they acted on it and they focused not on the corporate they focus on the individual and i think like a lot of if you look at business 
too many people focus on the the big shiny object like if i if i told you like i'm focused all in on this one client then all of a sudden if i lose it i have i have yeah, no client yeah. that wouldn't make any sense yeah and and too many people are focused on like this 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 big grand slam right. and and my mentor my mentor says it's the base hits it's the yeah, base well, hits yeah all day long solid yeah. base hits solid base hits solid base hits and yeah, before you know it you gotta you won the game you know yeah yep it's like you know, it's like how we, like how I play golf. You know, I try and you know hit the ball, you know, five hundred yards, and it doesn't happen. So it uh, goes in the trees. And if I would have just hit, use the club, and not try and kill the ball, that's me. Yeah, yeah. I'm like, I'm gonna kill this thing, and it's up in the trees, and all, all yeah. power, and it goes. Yeah, like, yeah. Three hundred yards, the wrong direction. Over swinging, getting all out of form, and right night. So like, you know, you think about it. I can tell the story. I played with my grandfather back when he was early 90s and he used to walk the course still and he actually had arthritis in his hands he had big fat grips on the on the uh clubs it was almost looked like uh, like a noodle on the end of the clubs so he could play and he'd hit 100 and something yards just like right down the middle right down the middle and he played with me and uh two of my uncles it was actually a blessing to play with him it was one of the last times we got he was still out and um he beat us all Right down the middle, boom, 100 yards at a time, 100 yards at a time. And we're in the trees where, you know, we're trying to get on the green in the first hit. And it's, you know, it's, it was like almost like a life lesson there, watching him just boom, 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 right down the middle in the hole. Like, and we're, we're getting stupid. We're trying to outdrive each other. And it's a, you know, it's a lesson there. Don't, don't, don't overpower it. You know, uh, actually, I love uh, Chris Whitehead's term, pushing a rope. You can't push a rope. It's so funny. Right? Wow. You know, all of us here are trying to push a rope and... You know, just let the let the rope pull you. That was actually I, I posted that on something he wrote this morning. I was like, uh, so I was just I was just saying to someone, maybe it was you or some. I, I think it was I think it was someone else. He is like the best one liners. Oh yeah, yeah. Like, like, like yeah. I met him, and I forget I was telling so and so the story of how I met him, and I, and I'll just tell this one liner instead of the story. But he um he was like, make sure you're planted on fertile soil instead of rocks. James, for far too long, you've been planted on rocks. And then he like walks away and he's like, <laughs> make sure you're planting on fertile soil. And I'm like, yeah, Fuck, man. It's like, pfft. yeah, like, so simple, mind. but so yeah, no, he, he's awesome. Yeah. I've, I've really been connected with him lately and uh, um, similar background, similar stories. And uh, I just, I don't know, he's an awesome, awesome dude. We've really connected. And uh, yeah, he's, he's got a great, great post, great one liners and uh, a lot of, a lot of knowledge. And, you know, he's, you know, through the trenches, you know, seeing the trenches, you know, because he's been through the trenches. Um, you didn't make it to the cigar night on on, on Thursday night, right? I, my flight got in too late. I would 100% have been there. Yeah, it was, uh, was like right up my alley. It, it was men perfect. Men. Yeah, it was it was really a nice Great event. And cigars that was like, and yeah. I was like, damn, dude, my flight like. Yeah, man. I know a lot of people came in. Some people came straight there, and but uh, he spoke about you know, basically how he you know, was missing out on life you know all through the process of, uh, you know, not doing things the right way, doing things the hard way drinking i mean that was his story he got a his first year in apex he got a dwi yeah crashed his truck about and talked about uh, you know squad, man. yeah and, and but just like how you talked about yeah. um like you were like hey i had a couple of drinks and like i was like you know i forget how you said it earlier in our in our conversation now but you recognized it and 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 chris talked about that at the goon squad of that and i was like fuck man like he was on like at like on his game and yeah. he still did that shit and he let a lot of people down and he yeah. apologized to a lot of people and he owned it yeah. and it's like that's the thing man it's like like you'll see people and, and i don't want to say it's going to happen in apex but like people will see someone that was once the upstanding citizen do something fucked up and they're like how could that ever happen right. you he had yeah. kids he had a what yeah. it's like dude he's tempted by temptation and the devil yeah. just like you just like anyone it's like there are there are there are things and i mean ryan calls it the force of average yep. there are things out there that i feel amazing right now and i might have a bad day and i'm tempted to do drugs and i hope knock on wood that i never do again or drink again yep. and 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 there's other people out there and you might say oh james is this amazing person and he helps so many thousands of little kids eat again and people and they help all this and then all of a sudden one day i'm like you know I want to do something fucking really stupid. I don't care. And, and then, and then for Chris to talk about it, it's yeah, like, yeah. like, I was like, dude, that's who I want in my, yeah. in my foxhole that yeah. I want someone that's like, yeah, you know what? 
I had everything going great. I screwed up. I, I, I apologized to everyone in my family, my kids, my wife, my mother, and I like, and I sat next to him at the Goon Squad event because I, I, um, I had like the little platinum thing and I got to have dinner and I got to sit next to him and have dinner with him. And I was like, this, I'm just an awe of a person that, you know, most people, they want to go after the speaker that, I can't speak for everyone, but a lot of people are like, they want the shiny speaker that's like, uh, like the real. earlier than now. Yeah. Tony Robbins is a great example. I'm like, and I'm like, give me the person that did some really screwed up stuff, either to themselves or to a lot of people, and they made it right. Yeah. That's the big thing. Not, we don't run from shit. We don't yeah. run from our problems. We yeah. don't, you know, scam and burn a bunch of people and, and, you know, not make things right in our life kind of thing. We've all yeah. screwed up somehow. But owning it, right? We want to we yeah, own him. it, you know? It's one thing to Dude, mess we, up, but, you know, to... Most people mess up and they blame everyone else, right? Maybe it's not my fault. This happened, that happened. It's like, no, I you're right. It. I own it. And I fucked I up. Owned it. And I'm going to fix it. And I I'm going to make away. it better. Yep. I was away for the conference. Something happened in my business with our, our, our corporate client, as I mentioned. And it, it involved an employee. And we're talking about my company. You know, on any average, we are helping hire like I said, two to three employees a month. I have 10 employees that work internally for me. It's, 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 it's extremely hard to bat hundred percent all the time. And, and a, and a bad apple got through and they, and they called me out on it. And I, I even encourage people to do it. I welcome happens, the but, yeah. I want feedback on employees. Yeah. I'm not, yep, yep. I'm not afraid of it. And they called me out. And as I like to say, and I don't know who said this, either David Goggins said it or Jocko Willick. I forget who I jump on grenades. And what I mean by that is like, I, I, I take it. I don't blame anyone. Right. I don't have excuses. Yep. And these women, they respected it so much. They were like, hey, this is what's happening. Instead of like the typical, like, well, hey, you know, you're this little bit. I was like, hey, I take full responsibility for that. You know, I've been away at this conference and that has taken me away from, from this. And I own up to that. That is not okay. And I'll take care of it. And basically, I had to fire an employee. Long story short, I had to fire an employee. Yeah. I didn't want to do it. Away at this conference, I'm trying to enjoy myself. Friday, I barely got to even enjoy the conference because I'm taking care of shit I need to. Long story short, just to kind of speed that along, the lady was like, that was really, like, incredible. Like, you, yep. you're you not messing around. And then she changed the conversation. <laughs> like, she goes, what if we brought on five more people with you? Are we, she's like, are we talking ten to 15000 a month with you? And I'm like... Did you not hear me? I just screwed up. <laughs> <laughs> but you own it, like, you know? Well, you know, listen, it, like, when you own it, we all make mistakes. No one's perfect. No business yeah. is perfect. Every business is only as good as your employee. I mean, whatever name it is, if they hire someone that messes up, they hire someone that messes up. You know, it's not, you don't have full control. People don't understand that. Until you've owned a business and you get it, you're only as good as your employees. You know, you could have the best employee, but that goes out and gets drunk last night a and comes in hungover, you a know? A-Rod... A Rod said something about it, and I, and I got to listen to the recording again because um, I knew I had to fire that girl, and I, and I fired her um, yesterday. Actually, I was trying to get a hold of her, and better to fire someone on the weekend. And so um, he said something, and I forget how he said it, but it, it it could be debatable to some people. He said people aren't looking for results; they're looking for certainty. It was something like that. And it's like my clients, yeah, of course they're looking for a result. Yeah, of course they want to see success, but they're looking for certainty. They want to make sure that this is going to work. They want no to make love sure and that trust. That goes back to that. Everyone says like and trust. I say no love and trust. You know, let's take it mm -hmm. to the next level. Mm -hmm. If you know love and trust someone, well, no matter what they're doing, if they mess up, it's okay because you know love and trust them. You know it wasn't intentional. You know they're going to make good on it. And when people know that you have integrity and that you will, we're going to mess up. I'm going to mess up. You're going to mess up. We all mess up. But, but are we going to own it? Are we going to say, you're right. It's my fault. I'm going to fix it. And it's not, you know, a mistake's not a mistake. And, you know, it's all in the recovery of a mistake. You know, it's, you know, if you can fix a mistake, it's not really a mistake. It's only when it can't be fixed that it's a problem. So, um, yeah, we, you know, I had a call, I had a call with one of the partners today and um, we were catching up on a bunch of stuff and, 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 and she just reassured me again. And, you know, I basically told them, like, in the most polite way, you know, I basically said, hey, look, you know, I'm here to assist. I run a business. Obviously, I'm not one of your employees. And just kind of like, was like, hey, you know, I'm here to make sure that this goes well. But I go to bat for you. I go to yeah. bat for my employees. Yeah. And, you know, 
you know, kind of set some boundaries still. It wasn't like, you know, appearing weak, so to speak, or wasn't like, oh, yeah, no. oh my God, I'm so sorry. I'm no, no, no. It was like, hey, right. yeah, I, I, own I, I, own, I own all that stuff. And, 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 he, and one of the partners was like, you know, we really respect that. Like that, that's what we want. And, 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 and it goes back to alignment or yeah. values, which kind of like how we started this talking about yeah. Apex stuff. It's like, if you're not acting like that in your business, you're going to attract really poor prospects. You're going to attract people that might take advantage of you. All people that I attracted, by the way, yeah. I've had all that happen. Yeah. And 100%. I joined Apex and, um, have I, have I made my money back off referrals? Yeah. But that's that. Have I made way more money off of change in behavior and mindset? Thousands of percent. I've gotten more of mindset than, than my well, mindset leads to money, but, um, you know, just the way I look at things, the way I approach situations, the way I handle situations, the whole, my whole outlook is a completely different by being surrounded, but it's still evolving, you know, by people like Chris Whitehead and watching how they've changed and, 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 and the lead, uh, Sammy Knight, I love Sammy Knight, he's, he's, he's definitely one of my Great heroes, guy. he's just, he's just, everything is just golden with him, he's such a loving human, like, literally, like, and, um, you know, and, and they, they're in a build people up business, you know, they, they, it, as a grown man, it's really cool to have someone tell them that they're proud of you and you can do better. I know you're going to do better. And it's like, I'm not letting this guy down. Like I got to do better. You know? And it's like, if he sees it in me, I, I better go get it. And you know, like I love the go giving, you know, Chris has coined the phrase go giving. And I've been trying to do more of that. And I find it, it actually works when, you know, when I go to you and say, yo dude, you're, you're awesome. That was a great job. Keep it up. You know, I'm proud of you. It means a lot. You know, you could be having a crappy day and someone tells you they're proud of you and, you and you're killing it and you think you're struggling, you're struggling, you're not really seeing the results, but other people are. It means a lot. So do it. Go out of your way and tell people, you know, help someone. Um, the guy that just joined Jeremy, um, I believe it or not, met him in the parking lot. Went out for dinner. Um, we were walking out of the parking lot. He was in the parking lot. We started talking. Um, random connection. He's doing a face recognition device so you hold up your phone and it'll be able to start your anything atv um car you know motorcycle um whatever you know construction equipment anything that has a key basically you'll be able to go boom show your face it'll bluetooth into the thing and it'll say okay it's okay to start pretty cool concept to me it's an affordable thing and he's brand new to apex he recovering heroin addict uh four <laughs> years clean um, and he's got his life together. It seems like he's got a tire shop. He's in, um, Louisiana and we hit it off and I said, dude, like I got to help you. And I've reached out to Thomas Keenan who came from the 12 volt world. And then, um, Brandon green, he connected with, uh, I connected him with today. And did I have to do that? No, but this guy, like he tells me his story. I believe in his product. He seems like a good guy. I think he's got something there. And he's in Apex. He just joined. And I was like, this is nice. why you joined Apex. Like, this is why you joined, because we're going to help you get this to where you need to be. And uh, I spent a half hour on the phone with him this afternoon, just kind of giving him some guidance and stuff. And, you know, I want to give. I want to give, you know, especially someone that's, you know, come out of the struggle and is trying to get their shit together. That, that means a lot to me. That means a lot to me, you know, that, that you realize that you were messed up and you're you're trying to do get better, you know, so... I'm going to give you the best opportunity I can give you and, and, you know, it'll come back to me in some, in some way, you know, you know, it's a, it's a, the universe gives, they say all the time, you know, you just keep giving to the universe and the universe will give it back. And, uh, you know, I just, it feels good to help people. It feels good to, you know, assure people. And, and I've always been a connector and why do I connect people? I never look for, you know, a lot of people connect people. Oh, listen, I'm going to hook you up with this guy, you know, give me some money on the side. I'm, listen, just send me a lead back. You know, I was going to send you a lead, and then if you have someone that you can send me, send them back. And that's how my circle works, you know. I'm not looking for you. You know, I don't want $100 off that. I don't want $500 off of that. I want you to think of me as a good guy. Say thank you. Take care of the client. And when you hear someone that wants to sell their house or whatever, you send them my way. And it works. Not everyone works like that, but you know, like I call it giving to the universe. You know, I give to the universe. Mm -hmm. The universe gives back. And uh, even if it's someone that doesn't deserve it, uh, that's something that I've kind of struggled with. You have someone that is kind of just someone that doesn't deserve it but you have an opportunity to help them help them anyway because they're not going to be able to help you but you know the, god the universe whatever you want to look at it sees that you're you're helping people and, and they're going to give it back to you it's just and, 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 
I know you said you want to probably wrap up soon, but one, yeah, of thing, on. one of the things my mentor said, just a little quote to kind of go off what you just said. Uh, he told me when I couldn't even help him at all, he, and, and, and this is like, you know, like real raw to me still. He said, he would help me out. He would take me on trips and, and he didn't ask nothing from me. And he would say, and I'd say, man, I, I can never repay this. And he said, don't worry. Good givers were once good receivers. Mm. And it like really, and now, now I'm able to help take people on trips. I'm able to help them out. Yeah. I almost took a couple of bunch of people to MDM and, and it just didn't line up. I was going to take my buddy. I offered to pay for his ticket and he had a prior engagement. And it's like, what an opportunity that I can, I can now give. And I was once that guy that received and couldn't give shit back. I was like, you know, so you, you, you might be planting a seed for someone that gives to someone else and you don't even know what's going to happen. Yeah. It's, uh, it's really important. I said, and it's, it feels good to give, you know, I don't, I don't know I tell everyone, you know, just to, to tell someone they did good and then see their face smile. It feels good. It feels good. And what does it take? You know, uh, I did a post the other day, uh, the, the most important, you know, what I remember what I posted, it was, it was from the event, it made me feel it, that basically love is the, you know, basically the biggest gift we can give someone, to love on them, to tell them they're doing a good job, pat them on the back, give them a hug, this world's a little tough, and a lot of people are going through crap, and everyone's going through crap behind the scenes, you know, as we talk to, you know, like hearing your story, and your struggles, and it's like, I never would have known that about it. you, hear that, it's like, holy shit, that's, that's real stuff right there, you know, and, uh, Everyone's struggling, and you know, you coming up and, and smiling at them, giving them a hug, and telling them they're doing a good job could be the thing that that takes them to the next level, or, or or keeps them from committing suicide, or you know, whatever bad things that are going on in their life. What does it take to give someone a smile, say good morning, say hi, you know, tell them they're doing a good job, or whatever? And uh, it's really important, I think, to to get out of our own shells and give back whenever we can. And it's so simple. What does it take to, you said, give someone a hug and tell them they're doing a good job? I mean. You know, I, I, I love the term, and it's a big Apex term, and I, I remember it from, was one of the things that stuck out from MDM last year is the term, I appreciate you. Most of the people in Apex, when you have a good conversation with them, like, man, I appreciate you. And it's like, you know, I appreciate you too. Like, thank you for that, those nuggets you gave me. And, you know, it's, uh, I just love that, that phrase, and it's, I try and do it more. I've tried to add it to my vocabulary to people when, and I come across people that, you know, are good people. I listen, I just don't, I appreciate you. I appreciate what you stand for. appreciate you being here. I appreciate you being a friend. And uh, I think it's important. And with that, I'm going to tell you that I appreciate you. This was an awesome conversation. I'm glad uh, we've connected. It's, uh, we connected in New York and uh, again at MDM. And here we are in, uh, in uh, what you'll call it, a uh, little podcast thing here. And uh, I appreciate you potentially uh, working together soon. Um, I, I appreciate your knowledge and uh, the conversation, and it's been awesome. So, uh, where can everyone find you? Uh, yeah, the biggest way is over Facebook. Um, I'll drop a link in the in the comments on my personal page of how to book a call with me, um, or my website outsourcekings.com. Outsourcekings.com. And okay. um, you know. Facebook is pretty much the easiest message in me or booking a call with me. I think we're going to probably start to put my calendar link somewhere on my screen because honestly, it's been kind of hectic lately with all the messages I've been getting. Yeah, yeah. No, it's, uh, you, you provide a great service. And, uh, you know, we talk about uh, in our world, you know, doing the, the task that, concentrate on a task that, you know, the 80 20 rule that we make all the money off of and stop wasting our time on tasks that someone else could be doing. And that, making phone calls and following up is definitely a task that, as a, as a business owner or CEO, you know, as the real estate agent, it's a waste of time to be, uh, to be doing that. Uh, you know, penny wise, yeah. dollar foolish. You know, I find a lot of people try and do every little thing, and when you can outsource it for a couple of dollars, and free up your time, and not even free up your time to make money, but also free up your time to keep your head right because you can't work 90 hours a week, and some of us try to do it. So uh, it's a great, uh, great, great service you're providing. Um, definitely, James. Uh, James, great people. So, if you're thinking of a business that needs some calling, uh, reach out to James. And uh, I Thank appreciate you, your brother. Uh, everyone, uh, have a great night. If anyone wants to join us on this journey of uh, 365 Dry, <coughs> um, James has been on it longer than me, but uh, I'm a couple of days in, and uh, just another day. Just another day, and that's how Sammy Smith told me to. You just wake up this every morning and say, I'm not going to drink today. One day at a time. One more day. One more day I'm not going to drink. One more day I'm not going to drink. And uh, before you know it, it becomes the normal normal thing. So, uh, good stuff. <coughs> All right. So, 
All right, everyone, have a great night. James, I will talk soon. And um, all right, and we'll see you next week. All right, take care, everyone.